And I'm very proud of everything they do because th their true intent is here to take care of the citizens. Ian Bennett has been the Harrisonburg Fire Chief for more than three years. His crew, along with the Rockingham County Fire and Rescue Firefighters, recently trained at James Madison University's Chesapeake Parking Garage. They were learning how to extinguish vehicle fires in a multi-level garage. We work together every day. Uh, Chief Holloway from Rockingham County and myself have an incredibly aggressive mutual aid agreement where our philosophy is we want the closest units to take care of a problem. So we, inter we interact every day together. Of we may go in the county, they come in the city to help. So it's important to train together so when, when the incident happens, we're, we're familiar with each other and we work together seamlessly. As Harrisonburg grows, more multi-level parking garages are being built to accommodate residents and visitors. And that's why it's imperative. So there's two pieces to this. The parking deck is a piece of that. We're up with, uh, we have the, the Gray Street parking deck. You know, there's one over uh, by the old hospital. There's one just getting ready to open by the convocation center. So you're right, these are becoming, the four, five, six stories are becoming more common. So it's important that we train with this. Now the fire departments are learning the best procedure to battle a blaze inside parking decks. Getting a water supply up to the fourth and fifth deck is a challenge, uh, whether it's fixed uh, suppression systems or uh, standpipes or whether it's taking off a ladder truck or up the side of the building. So we're practicing all different techniques. But the other important part of this training is we're practicing high-rise training. We get larger buildings to, to train in high-rise, but they're occupied buildings so we can't flow water in it. So we can simulate the same, same type of conditions in a high-rise in a parking deck, but the ability to flow water and, and get a water supply. So it's extremely valuable to us. These buildings are located throughout the city, and we need to be prepared for the possibility of vehicles catching fire inside of these specialized structures. Matthew Tobia is a deputy chief with HFD and says the local departments are working to avoid what has already happened in other cities. The uh, city of Houston, for example, had a very significant fire. Newark International Airport also had a very significant fire in a parking deck. These pose special challenges for firefighters for a number of reasons. First, the level of the ceiling is such that we can't drive our fire engines close to where the fire occurs. So we need to be able to take our attack lines, our fire hoses, and connect them remotely from our fire engines. That takes more time, it takes more personnel, and it is very labor intensive. He adds that the concern is about more than just saving property. So in the Houston incident, there were multiple individuals who were injured. In that specific incident, the parking garage was located below apartments that were constructed above the parking deck. And in that situation, the smoke communicated upwards into those apartments, which created additional hazards. Fortunately, in the Newark, New Jersey incident, there were no injuries, but over 40 vehicles were involved in fire at that time. Because the vehicles are parked close to one another, the possibility of flame spread is very high and very likely. Jeremy Holloway is the Rockingham County Fire and Rescue Chief. Holloway says it's an advantage for his firefighters to work with the city. It's imperative that these uh, personnel work together so that when we do have an actual event, they are well trained, they know each other's uh, responsibilities and, and what they're you know, capable of doing. Um, you know, you look and see there's, there's people strong in different aspects, so it's important for the staff to understand that and know that. Um, on a daily basis, um, you know, you'll see a city fire truck in the county and a county fire engine in the city. Um, and city rescue squad, um, they respond in the county uh, as much as they do the city. They probably run 50% of their calls in the, in the county. Chief Holloway explains how firefighters are able to extinguish a blaze inside the parking deck. This building here has a standpipe system in it, and what that is is we hook to the exterior of the building, um, and there's water lines already pre-piped in the building, and as they go into the building, they'll stretch off them lines to be able to give water inside the building so you don't have to drag the hose all the way up um, from here. They're also getting ready to do an evolution where if the standpipe system was out of service, they would have to drag hose, take hose up on the outside of the building or run it off a ladder truck inside the building so they can connect to them lines inside. Holloway says working with the city firefighters is a win-win for residents. It's, it's just a joint effort. Um, it's imperative that we do train together and work together. It's also a benefit to the taxpayer that, you know, no matter um, where the call is, either responder is able to assist them and uh, to make the situation better. The Rockingham County Fire and Rescue responds to more than 20,000 calls per year. And actually our call load is uh, uh, rising up in some areas, especially around the hospital areas. All that growth has continued to grow in that area. Um, we've had to, um, we're getting ready to start construction on a new fire and rescue station there. Um, 
to be able to better provide services there for personnel, give the volunteers hopefully a place that they can come in and, and respond out of and uh, just continue to provide the service for that growing area. The firefighters were under close observation, but not just by the fire chief and instructors. There was a very special group intensely watching the training. JMU has a special program for preschoolers, and they had some questions for the chiefs. In Harrisonburg, Elaine Rackley for Breaking Through News.